the guidance speaks to the momentum, but also to the opportunity we have ahead. I mean, when you think about that guidance, it's 10 to 12 percent revenue growth on a full year basis. It's solid margin expansion and it's earnings at the low end of 15 to 20 percent. Rachel, if which I really may, does that imply, though, slowing from here, slowing from that momentum that you saw in the first quarter? No, it actually takes momentum to be able to achieve those results. It's maybe not at the same pace in some of our areas, but we continue that momentum. Well, Starbucks seeing strength in its stores. The coffee chain reporting an earnings beat on its same store sales, both in the U.S. and especially in China. Its workers, though, are calling for unionization as economic gloom continues. Here with their view, we got Michelle Eisen, Starbucks barista and member of Starbucks Workers United. Of course, Michelle, you've been at the negotiating table here, but I want to point to a statement that we got from Starbucks this morning to Yahoo Finance on the contract proposals. Starbucks says Starbucks and Workers United have reviewed preliminary economic and non-economic proposals, including what Workers United has called their contract pillars at many of the recent in-person bargaining sessions held for single stores. Now, at the union's insistence, Starbucks has only listened to these proposals at these bargaining sessions. We anticipate future sessions to include a robust discussion about proposed pillars and other mandatory bargaining subjects. So, Michelle, now that we've got that statement out of the way, how close are you to reaching an agreement with the company? I mean, unfortunately, I think that's a slight mischaracterization of what has actually taken place. Um, there have been a handful of in-person bargaining sessions that have taken place in the last few weeks, um, but those have included the company showing up and you know, not having an excuse to walk out of the room, which is what we've seen them do in, in previous sessions. They did have to sit there and listen to workers tell their stories and discuss these proposals, but they showed up to these sessions not only without any sort of response to the proposals that they've actually had in their hands for several months. They've had our non-economic proposal package since last October, I believe. They came with no counter proposals, and we didn't even, we have yet to TA or agree to a single sentence in any proposals. So, you know, we're not actually any closer to any agreement that we were. And I think that Starbucks, you know, coming in here and saying, oh, you know, these negotiations are happening and they're going well is is incorrect. In fact, in the last couple of sessions, the representative that was on the side of the company actually stated to the workers, I haven't actually been authorized to make any concessions or to have any negotiations. So, or to make any sort of agreements. So that's not actually bargaining in any good faith if you're sending someone in who doesn't have the authority to do any bargaining. So the hope is there is some kind of bargaining here down the line. If you're saying that hasn't even happened yet, we were just showing some of the demands that you have put up there, including $20 an hour starting wage nationwide. When you look at everything that you have laid out here, um, what is the key sticking point? What are you willing to negotiate on? I mean, those things that you're seeing right now are are very high. I think with in terms of high on our list in terms of priority. And that's because what we're seeing, especially in spite of some of the little bit of an interview I just saw with our CFO, the company is is reporting record profits yet again, you know, profit increases. Um, a lot of times to get those profits, it's because things have been taken away in other levels. Um, and in the case of the employees, we're seeing reduction in our hours. Um, we're seeing labor being cut. Um, and that, of course, does increase the bottom line. If you're reducing the number of labor hours, then the company is more profitable when it comes to what they're what they're coming in. So what we need is assurances. And the only way to guarantee that the company isn't going to come in and slash our hours in order to you know make them themselves appear more profitable is to have that in a, a signed contract that says, no, you can't come in and, and do that and treat your workers that way. You point to the numbers that we got out from Starbucks uh, yesterday in terms of the most recent quarter. Uh, certainly things are looking to turn around for the company. Does that strengthen your hand in these negotiations? I mean, it is a company who is out there saying, look, we're an incredibly successful, uh, profitable company, and we've just reported these earnings for our last quarter, yet our workers can't afford to pay their rent and buy groceries. So how can you, you claim to be a better company, claim to be a profitable company and not be taking care of your workers who are the ones responsible for bringing in those profits? It's these hourly workers on the floors of these cafes. It's their labor that brings in the majority of these profits. So I think it strengthens our case in that workers are recognizing that the only safety here with a company like Starbucks 
is to organize, is to band together and to have our voices heard. We we like that Starbucks is successful. We want to help make it more successful, you know, and what better way to do that than to listen to the workers who run these cafes every single day on the ground floor. Um, and so I think what we're seeing when Starbucks comes in and makes these statements is that workers are like, okay, so where's my piece of that? You know, how do I get a, a piece of these profits? Uh, we know Spar Starbucks has specifically sought to negotiate store by store. Uh, it sounds like you're looking for a different approach here. Why is it important for the union to have a singular agreement in place for Nationwide? Well, I mean, you're looking at a corporation. You're looking at stores that, um, you know, the company sends down these policies and procedures. They're blanket policies and procedures. They they cover every corporate store in the U.S. Um, to have different levels of policy and procedure doesn't really make any sense. So those those individual contracts that the company is saying, you know, this is what we're we're agreeing to bargain on. I don't think that's beneficial for the company either. I mean. Part of what makes Starbucks so successful and why it's so popular is a, is a consistency. And so I don't see that the company would want inconsistency within those stores. And I think when you're looking at, you know, an individual collective bargaining agreement for every store, you risk, you run the risk of an inconsistency. And that's not something that the company would be happy to have. Well, we'll be watching the negotiations there uh, as we see those developments uh, come out. Michelle Eisen, Starbucks barista and member of Starbucks Workers United. Appreciate your time today. Thank you.